Hey everyone, it's Norm Ferrar, AKA The Beard Guy here, and welcome to another Lunch with Norm, the e-commerce and Amazon FBA podcast. In this episode, we're gonna be talking about something different today, something that I'm very interested in, and that is working with Amazon affiliates. And we're gonna be talking about, oh, it, it, it sounds crazy, but making $200,000 per year in Amazon affiliates. And that's what my guest has done. Anyways, we're going to be talking about exactly the process in which uh, he made the money with Amazon affiliates. Uh, what are the major hurdles and what's realistic? What are the how do you manage expectations? All right, guys, welcome to another Lunch with Norm, the e-commerce and Amazon FBA podcast. Lunch with Norm. Lunch with Norm. Lunch with Norm. Okay, today, like I mentioned earlier, it is we're going to be talking about making 200k per year as an Amazon affiliate. Now, a lot of you think, well, what does that have to do with for me being an Amazon seller? Remember, in this podcast, we give you options. We did it last week. We're going to continue to do it. We want to provide you with options so you can expand your understanding and education in the online business, in your online business. All right, our guest, uh, our guest runs an online blog called No Shame Income, where he shares what's working for him in the world of online marketing. He started learning about online marketing as a way to generate additional income. He enjoys connecting uh, with others and helping people achieve his uh, their goals. His current focus is creating product reviews for physical products typically found around his house. Our guest today. John Shea, and we'll get to John in a second. But first, let's have a word from the sponsor. A big thank you to our sponsor, Post Purchase Pro, the only complete A to Z done for you real email and text marketing service built specifically for Amazon sellers. My friends, Sean Hart and Seth Stevens co-founded Post Purchase Pro after launching over a thousand successful private labeled products, growing 53 brands, and get this, exiting 17 businesses. Post Purchase Pro creates all of your digital assets 100% for you from marketing inserts, complete sales funnels, email follow-up sequences, and weekly email promotions. They manage and optimize everything for you to drive more sales, get higher ranking, and receive more reviews on Amazon. So check out Post Purchase Pro now to see if you too will see enormous growth like their nearly 500 clients worldwide. That's Post Purchase Pro at postpurchasepro.com slash lunch. Okay, we are back. Where is the Squire? Hello, hello. Good to see you. Happy Monday. Good, look at that. Look at that hair. Oh my and God. Yeah, I got a little haircut. I was telling you before the show that uh, it was unexpected. Um, I had a little miscommunication with my uh, barber and uh, now I have short hair. So it's uh, just in time for, yeah, Movember coming up in a couple of weeks. So yeah, uh, anyways. For Austin, for Austin. Yeah. So um, yeah, welcome to the show, everyone. Uh, welcome to the Lynch with Norm podcast. It's great to see everyone. We've got Michael, we've Marsha, Andrew Smith, Connor, Cool Hand 99 and it's, yeah, fantastic to see everyone um if you're new to the podcast make sure you smash those like buttons give us a thumbs up if you're excited for today's episode and uh, it's going to be a good one it's going to be something very different than what we've done before coming from amazon as a seller um, but now we're going to be talking about more of the affiliate space and what you can do with that so um yeah super excited about this episode um if you have questions about the show if you want to ask um, if you have questions about running your Amazon business, you can head on over to our Facebook group. That's Lunch with Norm, Amazon FBA and e-commerce co uh, collective. That's where you can join the community, uh, engage, and uh, just have a good time. Uh, hang out with the other beardos. Um, as you can see, everyone in the comment sections, uh, you can guarantee they're in the Facebook group as well. So go check it out. The links are in the description. And I think that's it. Okay, fantastic. So if you do have a question, comment, throw it into the uh, comment section. Uh, I'm expecting that we'll have lots of questions today. 
So get your questions in early so we can get to them. If we don't get to your question, we'll definitely try to answer it in the group. All right, sit back, relax, grab that cup of coffee and enjoy this episode. Welcome, John. Thanks for having me. Hey, it is good to have you. This is what I like about doing podcasts. When I meet really great people, they tell me about really great people and we can reach out. So uh, I really appreciate you coming onto the podcast and, and talking about this really cool subject. So um, anyway, it was perfect. Like I told you just before we got on, this is perfect timing. Yeah, I'm excited. I know um, this is kind of a, a newer venture in terms of like what's available with Amazon. So hopefully I can get into some good details and there's probably some benefit here as well for sellers. I can shed some light on um, as ways that you might be able to get more exposure to your products in terms of like um, video content and other ways that you could push more sales. So I'll kind of talk a little bit about that, too, because I know that's more your audience. Mm -hmm. uh, so I guess, where do you want me to start? Do you want to give well, a little background or? Yeah, yeah. I'm interested because, uh, you know, whenever I see when Kelsey puts up a title and it's 200K per year, I, I'm going, all right, how realistic is that? So that's where I want to start. Your background in, and, uh, you know, is $200,000 realistic? Yeah. Why don't I give a little bit of a background as to like where I got to now? And that will sure. lead up to this. So I'll skip some of the stuff, um, you know, because I have a long journey. I started in 2013. Um, the stuff all kind of glazed over was I basically joined an MLM, didn't really make a lot of money, tried a bunch of things. And um, around 2014, I was seeing a lot of people in the Internet marketing space that were building blogs where they use the traditional Amazon Associates program. And for those of you who are maybe not aware of how that works, the basic idea is that you have a link um, that you could create from Amazon to a specific product page. It can generally be probably about 99% of the products on Amazon are compatible with this. So you as a seller, you know, I could go find your product and I could even you know, promote that and I would earn a, a small commission. Amazon pays anywhere from like one to around 4%, depending on the product category. So for example, like computers and tech is around 1.25%, I believe, and something like furniture, uh, like an office chair, for example, I'm sitting in, if I sold that, it'd probably be more like a 4%. So it's not a, a really high commission. If you look out there, you can find programs that'll pay 50% or sometimes even more percentage on commissions, but obviously people trust Amazon. Um, so I saw a lot of people were making these blogs and making a lot of money promoting, um, you know, they would create content, write articles, rank the site on Google, so they can make a whole website about coffee machines, for example. Mm -hmm. And people could land on that site and probably learn more, get more information, better condensed information than what they would see on Amazon. It would give them a better filter for learning and understanding, like, what do I want to buy? So um, I got excited by this and I actually went to my wife and I said, hey, why don't we build a website? What's like an idea? Let's work together on a project together. And she came up with the idea of Skull Clothing. So um, I looked around and I was like, well, the domain Skull Clothing was actually available. It had good search volume in Google. I was learning SEO at the time as well. And um, I basically decided to build this whole site around that niche. And um, just so happens that there's a lot of products, especially right now, it's Halloween time. There's a lot of themed products around skulls and, you know, it could be dresses, jewelry, clothing, anything. Um, so I built this whole site and I actually got it up to making, you know, a few hundred dollars a month. Um, I wasn't quitting my day job, but I had at one point been trying to go all in on it and really build it up and thought this was like the dream of passive income with this. But um, because it was more e-commerce focused, it was harder to get traffic to the site. I had tried Pinterest and all these other things that I thought would work and it just was very slow and wasn't really taking off to like quitting my job type of income. So um, I ended up buying a site in the cat niche and um, thought that would be maybe a little bit easier. It's a little wider range. I could do blog articles. So I hired all these writers on Fiverr and I actually got some articles ranking pretty well and I was bringing in um, a little more consistent income, but again, not enough to quit my job over. So I kind of left all that stuff behind for a little while and I actually went off and learned how to sell and started my own SEO agency. I basically hired, um, I more or less found partners that I could work with and I just kind of dived into sales. And over time I was able to build up a portfolio on Upwork and I was making quite a bit of money doing that, but kind of while doing this, I just had always still dreamed of going back to that more passive model where I didn't have to be interacting with people or clients. Um, wasn't like my dream of becoming an entrepreneur and needing to deal with people because I came out of a job 
doing tech support for six years. So I was talking to people all day long, sometimes eight hours a day. And it wasn't like, you know, I didn't want to leave my job to go do the same thing. So um, where it led up to today was I had met a good friend of mine, an entrepreneur who I saw blow up his YouTube channel. And he got, you know, very quickly from like zero to 100,000 subscribers. And again, he was really good at this. Um, I kind of went to him and was like, you know, what are you doing? And um, I started making videos, again, doing similar stuff that I was doing at the time. Maybe it was some affiliate marketing, some web design, some SEO stuff, or anything that I was involved with in internet marketing at the time. But none of my videos were really taking off. And all of a sudden, I did a video review on the Peloton bike, which is a popular exercise bike. And many of you have probably heard of that bike by now. But um, when I was initially looking for information about that bike, there really wasn't a lot out there. It was very vague. And um, I just realized, you know, I had to go to like their studio and demo it for myself and learn some things like they had these special shoes and all these different things. And I said, you know what, um, I'm going to buy it. Um, I didn't feel 100 percent confident, but I knew I wanted to get it. So um, I ended up buying that. And um, I after a couple months, I was like, well, why don't I make a video on YouTube about my experience? So I made it more detailed than, you know, what the salespeople at Peloton told me. I made it more detailed than every other video that was out there. And that video ended up getting over 100,000 views. Um, Peloton had a non-traditional affiliate program. You didn't earn income. You would actually get clothing. And I'm wearing one of their shirts right now, in <laughs> fact. Um, so I ended up getting um, coupon codes where people, I would basically get credit in their store. I get $100 off every referral. I ended up getting 36 of those. So I have over $3,000 in Peloton clothes, not by choice. But hey, you know, I'm not going to complain, right? They're nice clothes. Um, so that was kind of an interesting turn. It was like, well, this went really well. Why don't I do this again? So I had been using um, one of those gaming chairs for a couple of years. Uh, very common. Those kind of popped up over the last five years where you'd see all the like red stitching or designs. And it was more of a look than it was um, ergonomics. So I ended up buying this ergonomic chair, which is the one I'm sitting in now. This has like really nice lumbar support. It's better for your back. And I did a comparison video of the two, again, publishing that on YouTube, and the video blew up to half a million views. Um, I then proceeded to generate over $15,000 in affiliate commissions uh, from people buying the chair I'm sitting in right now. So I was like, wow, I'm really on to something with these product reviews, kind of you know, giving my feedback and being really detailed about something. No different than if I had a friend over, right? If someone just came over my house and was like, what do you think of that office chair? You know, What would I tell them? So that's what I would put in my videos. And um, I was actually reached out to by a big affiliate marketer who does a lot of affiliate marketing. And he knew about my YouTube success. And I ended up creating a program actually all about YouTube and what I'd done based on what I've shared with you so far. And um, while I was creating that program, I actually started exploring Amazon. And Amazon has something called the Amazon Influencer Program. So if you've been on Amazon recently in the last probably like a year or so, you'll notice that there's now people going live on Amazon. It's basically like QVC network on Amazon. Anybody can sign up to become an influencer. Um, they do have some some strict um, restrictions around getting approved, but it's not nothing crazy. It's more or less you have to have a social media following. They want, you know, Amazon wants people to bring their TikTok, their Instagram, their Facebook followings um, into their platform to buy products, right? Because that's how they make money. So, um, I explored this program and in May of last year, I almost didn't even do it, but when I was creating the program about YouTube, I actually started exploring this Amazon thing and I was, I almost didn't sign up, but I was like, you know, maybe I'll give it a shot. I got approved and um, there's two pieces to that program. So one piece is you can actually publish videos on Amazon as an influencer and the other piece is you can go live, both of which you can earn the standard Amazon Associates Commission. So can I stop you there for a second? Yeah. Because that is a, a, a point of confusion. And by the way, if you're not even joining the Amazon influencer program, like if you, you're saying, wow, this doesn't really concern me, yeah. think again, because this is about promoting your brand. And you can go out there and hire an influencer, or like you were saying, John, you can go live. And I, I've been exploring this for quite some time now. And I think anybody who's an Amazon seller you can go out there and promote this product. Like Carlos Alvarez was on here talking about going live, like Amazon Live. And then you can go out and hire influencers. And we'll get into all of this. And then getting the influencers to uh, promote your product and allow you to promote whatever their videos that they've, they've, um, that they've recorded. But anyway, I just wanted to, sh to state that brands, 
can just accelerate on on this program. And if you're not doing it, you should be doing at least Amazon Live. So go ahead with that. Yeah, um, and to add to your point there, um, there's a big bigger company and I own a couple of their products called Greenworks. Um, I have one of their lawnmowers. They basically make electric tools like lawnmowers and you know snow blowers, yada yada, all that good stuff. And they might have a rep from that company go live and just showcase all their products. Um, you may not necessarily have um, that many products to do a live where you could sit there for an hour, but there's no time limit, right? You could show up for 15 minutes and um, talk about, you know, maybe four or five different products. And one of those could be your own. Maybe it doesn't even, it could be a theme where maybe you're talking about something relevant, but isn't necessarily a competitor to your product. Um, so that's usually how I would do them. But um, there's opportunity there to make money. Essentially, if someone's watching that live, um, you have a chance of one, um, that video of the live video showing up on the Amazon product page at that time. And um, they have kind of a ranking system. So as you build up your following there, you can actually get higher placement where the visibility will be much greater. Um, yeah, there's this, three this, tiers, right? Yeah, there's three tiers. So you, basically you have your initial tier, you've just signed up. The second tier, um, I'm trying to remember the exact qualifications, but it's very minimal. Like you don't even need to have a certain number of followers. I think you just need to hit um, a very small amount of revenue, and then um, you need to go live. I think it might actually be just going live for like 90 minutes. You're right. It's 90 minutes live, and uh, it's called the Rising Star. Yeah, so you, that's actually the level I'm in now. Um, I haven't focused as much on the live, so I've probably done about 10 or 15 of them. But um, the idea is that you can eventually become what's called A-list. And in order to get A-list, you have to have a certain number of sales in a given 30-day period. And then you also have to have 2,000 followers on the Amazon platform. Um, that's probably going to be the more challenging one of the two. Um, the sales, you know, if you just go live often enough, you could probably hit that featuring various products. Amazon has gotten a little stricter because there were people coming in and, you know, with a list, you have to physically have the products or they at least somewhat want you to have around 75% of the products on hand when you're on live. So you can't just pull up like a $3,000 swimming pool and then just sit there and talk about that and then go to the $3,000 hot tub and not actually show these products in some capacity. Um, something that I've done and some other people do is they may record a video. Like, let's say I had my video in my office chair. I can play that muted um, in the in the actual stream and then I'll just talk over it again, like a fresh review almost and be there live talking about it as I'm panning my camera around that item. So it helps with the larger things that I'm not necessarily going to drag into this room. Uh, for example, if I wanted to talk about my brand new grill, right, I'm not going to go walk around out to my grill on my deck and then come back here, right? I, I've done that a little bit where I had like my gym area. I was able to do it in the gym area because everything was there. I could use my iPad and go live right on the iPad. But um, typically, you, you're going to want to have things that are a little bit smaller you could physically have. Um, with you to m hit the qualifications that Amazon really wants to get approved for the A-list tier. So, John, this was something that was very confusing to me when I, I started this process. Do you have to have, is influence the influencer program part of the affiliate program? Do you have to be approved for affiliate first and then uh, get involved with the influencer program? No. So what they'll do is um, I had like an I you have an ID inside of your associates account. So if you already had that, um, you can basically go and apply as an influencer and they just create a separate ID. Um, you in my case, I have three IDs. I have one for commissions earned on Amazon. Mm -hmm. I have some for um, commissions from my store. You have a store page where your live videos go and any content that you produce, images, videos, so on and so forth. And then you also have um you know, the ability to obviously do your own links from your own websites. So in my case, I have three separate IDs. So like one is basically my blog, my YouTube, one is for that store. And then one is for the on-site commissions, meaning stuff that I put on Amazon, such as video content. Um, so you, if you were to sign up from scratch, you don't have it. They'll just create probably, I think, one or two profiles. You would probably just have your store, and then you'd also have the other. And you can create links off of any of those, I believe. So they allow you to select and choose how you want to, you know, kind of separate everything out. Um, but yeah, it's pretty straightforward. Um, if you get approved as an influencer, it's kind of like you're automatically being approved for associates. How I, I'm just, and I'm throwing these questions out to you. Uh, how tough is it to just go live? You've got your product. You're either an influencer or you want to go live. 
How tough is it? So um, I don't know if this has changed, and I haven't looked at it in a little while, but one big restriction is that they only allow this to work with iOS devices. So um, it, that's a little bit of a burden, obviously, if you have an Android device. What I did is I went out and bought an iPad, and I just wrote it off as a tax business expense, which it is, right? Um, so that's basically what I did on that front. If you wanted to get past that barrier, um, maybe you don't have a lot of money to get started, I would just go buy an old iPhone and use that as just a way to download the app in the iOS store. Right. You don't even have to have cell phone service on that iPhone. You just use it to get into the Apple store. Um, so that's one That's one initial burden, and I'm sure they're working on that. And I, I, again, don't quote me, that may even be rectified by this point. I just haven't looked into it. Um, beyond that, basically, you're just setting up a typical um, streaming software. Like if you were to go live on a platform like Twitch, for example, um, for like where gamers go, a lot of people use um, OBS software, OBS Studio, open yeah. broadcaster software. So you're just essentially taking a file that Amazon provides, uploading it that has all the criteria in terms of like bit rates and all the stuff that they need to stream properly. Um, you're setting up your sources. So obviously with like what you've got here with StreamYard, you have special effects like my name showing over here, I'm trying to point my finger, you know, stuff like this, you could set up in OBS um, as well. And, um, you know, you could customize it. And then beyond that, you're just using the app, going on the app saying, hey, I'm going live. It's fairly intuitive in terms of, I don't have my iPad in here, otherwise I'd pull it up and show, but um, you're basically adding, you're creating a playlist um, within Amazon. So if you imagine you were to go create your typical wish list for Christmas time, you're doing the same thing with Amazon. You're taking that wish list, adding all the products prior to you going live. And then um, you're going to see a carousel in the app. And as you're talking about that product, you just simply could use your iPad or your iPhone and you pick each product and it will have that highlighted in the live. Um, so it is a little bit technical to set up, but not super complex. Most people, you know, I see plenty of people on there. I could tell they're probably not very technical people. Right. Uh, you just take a little bit of time to figure out the nuances, get the file uploaded into OBS and you're off to the races. Yeah, we um, we started this with um, Streamyard, and uh, <laughs> excuse me, sorry for coughing in everybody's ear, but um, I already warned you last week. I got this cough going into fall. Uh, yeah, you know, I Kelsey came down uh, this weekend, and we we just fixed up the work studio, so we've got a studio that we're going to be broadcasting from. Um, this is a small podcast booth, but we've got something where we've. Uh, and I'll tell everybody at the end of the, the show what's exactly happening. But um, anyways, I was really surprised how easy it is to, you don't have to have the product, first of all. You can just go, oh, this is an interesting product and you know put it into your list. And you can just easily just put it in into a list that you're gonna be promoting. You can move it around to you know whatever order that you want. And even when you're talking about it, um, this is something I was surprised. You don't have to have the physical product. You can. It's probably worth it. Um, and, and but what was cool was Kelsey just pulled up. We you know we started talking and he said, oh, so here's the product. Blah 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 blah. This is the package. This is the customer experience. Well, here it is online and kind of just going through the bullets online. Or you could even just go through those bullets online. Now it's it's not a ton of like it's one to four percent like you said uh it's great for your own brand if you're if you're interested in going out there and and, and uh, you know going that we're going to get into this in a second and, and um making money that's a different thing but i'm kind of interested can you can you get the referral um uh, the, the bonus referral program so if you said hey i want coupon norm 20 mm -hmm. and those coupons went back to whoever's product and you've already talked to the seller could you get that Do you know yeah so it's fairly common um you know if i was to be doing a live and maybe at that particular time frame maybe there was a lightning deal on that particular yeah. product that will automatically show up but if you also have a coupon code um so let's say i talk to a seller and they you know, want me to promote that as live. Maybe I'm being, I'm sponsoring their content, right? Right. Mm -hmm. I could simply just apply. There's actually an option in the app. You can apply a coupon code to that product and that will show up in the live. So it's like a specialized incentive 
that um, someone as an influencer going live can actually do a, a unique coupon code that, that people would not otherwise see if they were just browsing that product page. So Amazon actually implemented that um, almost automatically into um, the live experience. So it is actually pretty cool that you can do that. And that's obviously a bigger incentive for people if they're watching, they're going to save money versus just going and buying it, you know, going to the listing. So uh, you started, you, you're getting right into it, and then I rudely interrupted you. But then how did you, uh, how did you start making money on the influencer program? Sure. So like I said, there's two pieces to this. And mm -hmm. um, the live is obviously one thing. And um, again, kind of you know, going back, in my mind and what I'd seen people do over the years is I particularly love the mindset of build something or put time and energy into something. I've always been a big fan of, uh, you know, one of my favorite podcasts uh, who is run by Pat Flynn, the Smart Passive Income Podcast. And his mentality has always been work hard now, reap the rewards later. Now, while going live is obviously beneficial, that's time, right? If I go live, I do that. Maybe the video kind of lingers out there for like a week or so, and then it kind of fades off a little bit. It dwindles down. It's not going to be kind of as um, evergreen as something like a YouTube video would be, right? Like my chair video or my Peloton video. Right. Um, but in this case, Amazon also has the ability, just like what I did with the video reviews on the YouTube stuff, um, I have another option where I can actually create what's called an on-site video. These videos um, typically are just an overview of the product. You could kind of format it whatever way you want. A lot of people do it as an unboxing or a review, um, you know, my experience with the product, however you want to look at it. Um, I kind of focus more on just the idea of review. Um, I don't really like the unboxings as much because I see some people do that and they're spending all this time taking packaging out and they haven't actually used the product. They can't really tell you anything about it. I don't really think that's helpful, right? It's kind of like, you know, I'm not really going to get that much help from someone sitting there unpackaging an office chair and building it and then not being able to tell me for 20 minutes what they thought of it. And then they really don't even know because they haven't used it, right? Um, so I try to focus more on reviews. Um, but generally the idea is if you look at an Amazon listing, um, you'll see that there's images within the image carousel, a vendor or a seller in this case has the option to upload a merchant video. So that's like your commercial, if you will, of a product, big, bigger name brands are going to most generally have these videos already. Um, at least one video with the influencer program, there's placement for about, um, a total of six videos, including the merchant video. So me as an influencer, I can go and upload um, a video review of that product. And this can be pretty much any product on Amazon. So if someone came to me and said, well, I have such and such item and I need a video review, um, there's going to be placement there. There could be one other influencer who's uploaded. There could be five other people who've already uploaded, right? So more popular items, it's basically inundated, mostly tech, especially has a lot of people who've already uploaded these videos. Um, I kind of in May went and started making some videos and this is May of last year mm -hmm. and I made $300 from the Amazon affiliate commissions that I was getting in about a week and a half or so. I think it was like from the 20th to like the end of the month. And I was like, you know, I've done a lot of things online. You know, I've even tried selling myself on Amazon FBA and doing like wholesale selling product through the Skull Clothing site. I had actually bought a bunch of wholesale stuff, sent it to the Amazon FBA. I worked doing e-commerce for a couple companies full time before I went off on my own. So I knew how all that stuff worked. Um, and it wasn't like I would go and just all of a sudden take a product, make it, and then be making $300 in like a week. It just doesn't happen. Um, you know, maybe it does for some people, but I, you know, I've never seen a lot of things online, you know, even learning things like web design or SEO, all that stuff took me like months and months and years to really learn, to get to a point where I could make substantial money. Um, a lot of skills it was very rare and in my case i had already done some you know video stuff but i was able to jump into this and make money quickly so that's where i saw a sign i was like okay what if i step this up significantly so in june um, i actually did a video on an air conditioner that i owned it was like a big standing air conditioner very large like six hundred dollars and of course we're in the summer months so that just blew up it was one of the top products on amazon and i was the only influencer video and my video is extremely helpful. I just told a story about um, using that and how we had the little dinky 5,000 BTU unit in our window, wasn't cutting it. Here's why this thing is good. I went over all the features, made it super helpful, very in depth. It was probably 10, 15 minutes long. And I think in June, I sold like $5,500 worth of that AC unit, which was equivalent to 
Um, actually, no, I think I sold like, I'd have to go look back, but I ended up making $5,000 in commissions off that one wow. influencer video. So um, I think equivalent in sales, it's probably like somewhere north of like $35,000, $40,000 in people buying that from my, from my video. Now, the goal with this, and unlike having a blog, is if somebody watches the video for a certain length of time, which it's generally 30 seconds, and then they move forward with the purchase, that's where you actually get the, um, that's where you get the commission. Um, so basically the way it um, ended up working out is because my video like kind of captured them immediately, they were going on to then buy um, the product. Um, typically I see about a 15% average of the people who watch my videos, they go on to buy. Um, I know for a fact too, that people spend their time on Amazon. One of the biggest caveats with Amazon is that they're reading reviews. They're spending time reading those reviews. My videos and the way that I create them is I'm thinking in my mind, how can I make this way better than any written review on, on that listing that, you know, they would ever get. And of course the video is going to be a much better experience. They see the product I'm talking about. I'm physically going around showing it, giving my experience. And while people may still read reviews to get the general overlook, um, the video is going to be way more helpful. You know, it's just, there's no way around that, I think. Um, so the way I um, kind of looked at this was we have a pretty big property. I actually am sitting in a four car garage. This is a converted garage bay, uh, one of four. So my garage is here. We have a ton of space. Um, me and my wife, it's funny when the movers moved us here, this was March of last year. Um, they were joking. They're like, man, you have so much stuff. And um it's kind of true. And I, I'll be the first to admit it. We're both kind of materialistic people. And it's been in my benefit because we have so much stuff. I was able to go out and literally every day just make 10 or 15 different video reviews. And um, I went really more with a while I was hitting for more of a quality as well as quantity. Um, I didn't spend a ton of time doing like editing. Um, I've been doing video for years. I, I had created um, there's a popular software product called Loom where you can record screen captures. And I've recorded well over 3,000 of those over the years. I've been doing YouTube, um, using Loom mostly for selling, answering emails. So I'm very good with video. I can just jump on. I could look at a product and do the video review without even really thinking about it or scripting it. I just jump right in. And um, I almost hardly ever have to back out and redo my, my uh, edit or go back and edit. So I was really looking at more of a volume play, more speed. And I came up with a whole process where I could upload consistently. So... Um, Kind of answering the big question right how did you make the 200k was i always laughed because i remember back in the day um, this is before the times of world of warcraft my friends would always joke we used to play a game called everquest back in the 90s and um, you had all the different currencies and you could drop the lowest currency because it would weigh your character down literally would you know, would impede your movement and i always thought it was funny because i would keep all the small currencies and my friends would always say well how do you have so much money or how do you have the money to buy those items in the game and I would say, well, I kept all my silver and copper. And, uh, you know, they would laugh and be like, well, okay, we dumped that. You know, we threw it out, literally dumped it. And um, it's the same thing with Amazon. Um, while I could go review, let's say I've got an Xbox controller here, right? This sells for, I think, like 50 bucks. It's in the electronics category. So I'm going to get really low commissions. Um, if I sell this, I'm probably only going to get like 75 cents or something like that. It's very low. So you might think, well, that's not really that great. Why would I go review that? I'm only going to make 75 cents. But it adds up. Um, just like it did in the game, I continuously added up the copper and the silver, and then eventually I was getting to the gold and the platinum and I could buy the, the uh, bigger stuff. So um, I kind of looked at everything in my house and was like, you know, I could review everything. I didn't even niche down. Um, one of my most popular sellers is actually mouthwash, uh, common mouthwash that most people have. Um, I've made commissions from bounty paper towels, which I'm pretty sure has been around since the 90s, if not earlier. And um, it's an item that it would almost think like, why would I go review that? It's kind of dumb because people know how it works and they're probably already using it. But then I look back at my stats and I'm actually seeing people watching my video about bounty paper towels and I'm making commissions on that. Hmm. So what's happening is I'm getting um, uh, really just volume of things adding up every day because I've produced so many videos. I'm now um, basically getting anywhere from 200 to upwards of 300 products shipping out every day. And then, of course, hitting some of those bigger items, um, like, for example, behind me, I have a $2,000 massage chair, right? If somebody buys that, I'm going to make like $100 in commission just from that. Um, I also have 
Uh, I know another popular item that's also behind me, and you can't really see it, but there's actually movie theater seats going along. I have five of them behind this chair. And um, the, someone bought that last week, and they bought four, um, almost $5,000. So they must have bought like four of them for a room. And I got like a $200 commission on that. So um, it's pretty mind blowing how it all really adds up, right? So that was kind of my mentality going into it. And um, yeah, that, that's kind of how I've been producing it. I just, um, you know, I had some fear around the idea of like, well, what if this program changes or what if I get banned or any of that stuff, right? Anybody could think that. And the same thing as a seller, right? Amazon could just decide tomorrow to take away your listing yep. for some reason. And yep. there's no rhyme or reason why, but I almost treated it with the same mentality as a job, right? If I go into it and I, you know, work this job for five years, I could get fired that next day for whatever reason or laid off. Any of that stuff can happen. So I've basically been, you know, going at it as a full-time thing. Um, I actually have, and I thought this would be cool to share. This is a box down here of a bunch of stuff that vendors have sent me um, that I'm actually going to review. So it's random items. Um, that's another thing that actually has come about is companies found my videos and they come to me almost daily now. And I've got people on messenger email and they're saying, Hey, you know, we want you to make a video review of our product. So, um, I've got, this is for kids. This is like a bubble leaf blower. I thought this was hilarious. So someone sent me this. I have a daughter, so she's going to love that. Um, what else do we have here? This is like a dinosaur. You dig a dinosaur. It's like eggs and all these small pieces. And it's, you know, really cool, like very interactive stuff. Um, anything else I've got here, like this is a uh, foam roller, right? A company sent me this vendor actually owns, um, similar to what you were saying, they have multiple, multiple brands. They've got um, a lot of them. And for many sellers, you've probably heard of them. It's Thrasio. Um, they're like one of the biggest Amazon aggregators, I believe that's out there. So they actually pay me bonus commissions of 10% on any items I sell. So not only do I get those Amazon commissions, but I'm earning probably a bonus, you know, two, $3,000 a month um, just from the bonus uh, videos that I've got with Thrasio because they've sent me thousands and thousands of dollars in product. Um, so I've got a ton of stuff here, but yeah, it's all miscellaneous. You know, like here's like a power bank. Someone sent me, you plug it into your phone. So every day I've got something new. Um, which for me has also been, I know for a lot of people, it can be tough to focus. And I've had a lot of that shiny object syndrome over the years. So this kind of curbs me a little bit. Like today I'm going to play with a dinosaur toy or I'm literally going to go out my yard. and. I know that exact one, by the way, I used to get those for my kids. Oh, really? Yeah. 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 Right. <laughs> so just before we uh, go further, cause I've got a, a bunch yeah. of questions uh, once we come back, but look, We've been talking about this. If you do have questions, I see a bunch coming in, comments, let us know. Have you ever done this yourself? Um, are you interested in getting involved with uh, the influencer program? Uh, and what's holding you back? So let us know. Now, we do have a great giveaway today. Just before we came on to the podcast today, we asked John about this. And, uh, you know, it's really relevant. So, John, why don't you talk about uh, the giveaway that you're providing today? Yeah, um, I just thought this would be a good like jump into this world. Um, when I first started with a lot of my online marketing journey um, and doing some of the YouTube stuff when I was talking more about marketing, it's very common that um, as an internet marketer, online marketer, there's many softwares, products, things of that nature that are teaching others to make money or helping people aid in that area. So one of the things that I did when I started was actually going out and doing um, video reviews for softwares or um products online that you could buy, right? So maybe there's an online course that you that you bought about Amazon FBA, and that's how maybe you got started. And the seller of that may have an affiliate program. Maybe in a lot of cases, they're gonna offer pretty good commissions. Most people might even offer as much as 50% or more. Um, so one of the things that I was doing when I first started was to go out reviewing um, software products and getting paid for that. And um, I was able to build that up to some extent as well. I just had a popular company um, SEM Rush, they create SEO tools, um, reach out to me, and they actually offered me a flat rate just to create a review video. I think they paid me like $300 and they gave me three months free of their software, which is like probably a three or $400 value. And um, yeah, they paid me and any sales that I get from um, referring people to SEM Rush, I would get, you know, commissions as I you know would um, normally. So I have a course that kind of goes into this. It's about an hour long. It shows an example of a video that I did this with. And um, 
just gives you some motivation around the idea of doing this with YouTube and some ways, so almost a case study around a software that I did a video review on. Um, so yeah, I'm going to give that away and, um, yeah, maybe we can do like five of them or something. I'll just give you five codes and you can give them out. Oh, that's fantastic. Okay. So if you are interested in the, uh, the course hashtag wheel of Kelsey tag two people and you'll get a second entry. So this is great. It's relevant. Uh, I think it's just another option, you know, now just keep in mind, we talk about shiny objects and we talk about that quite a bit and try to stay focused, but I don't mind going out there and exploring different um, areas. We're going to talk this, about this at, towards the end of the show, but uh, hashtag Willa Kelsey, tag two people, and you will get a second entry. Now, before we go any further, let's have a word from a sponsor. I want to give a quick shout out to an incredible group of sponsors who help keep our podcast running. The Lunch with Norm podcast wouldn't be possible without the support of the following sponsors. Post Purchase Pro, Clear Ads, Goldstein Patent Law, Honu Worldwide, Netfluence.co, Video Telepathy, Startup Club, and Dragonfish Brand Management. I just want to let our sponsors know, you're awesome. Now let's get back to the show. All right, Kelsey, let's make this interesting. So we'll give out one code, and then what we'll do is we'll provide the winner with a press release, and we'll send, if you're in North America, uh, one of our mugs as well. So that's for one. The other four, we're going to make a challenge for our Facebook group. And if you, I don't know what it is. I'm not smart enough to make those challenges. So I'll leave that up to Kelsey. But that's awesome. And uh, again, John, thank you for you know giving us five codes. I was expecting one. So super, thank you. No problem. All right. So one of the other things uh, is how do you get people to start listening to you? So you're brand new. You go out. You're, you, you sign up. You become a rising star, which means nothing. You have zero followers. What do you do? Do you just start talking? Yeah, I mean, from the live side of things, obviously the exposure is going to be much more minimal. Um, you know, and I, I focus more on the video side of things, if that wasn't more obvious, just because that basically gives me almost not guaranteed, but very high chances of placement on listings that don't have all those influencer videos. Mm -hmm. So that's really where I've put. 90% of my time. Most of the lives I did were sponsored based. So Thrasio, for example, was willing to um, pay me bonuses based on generating sales of their products and going live and things like that. So um, that was a benefit there to be doing it. Um, you know, I think it's kind of a preference for some people. Like um, if they want to go live, there's a guy that I know, he absolutely loves it. He actually, um, it's funny because he dresses like uh, Luke Kang in Mortal Kombat. And he's super excited. He gets on and um, there's benefits in the sense of the exposure, right? He's getting a lot of companies reaching out to him to send him more products and he's getting free stuff and all these different things uh, all while still making income. Um, I particularly like doing the videos a little bit more because it's kind of I can just get it out there and then um, continue to generate that. And I can focus my time on that as opposed to going live and then needing to bring all this stuff. <laughs> it's a little tedious to think about, like, where did I leave that? one item that I need to feature today. So um, I'm, I'm just a little confused about it. And again, I'm new to this, yeah. right? So when you say you're doing features, so I under, or sorry, videos. So I understand the influencer side, probably 2%, 3%. And, you know, we, we're going to expand on this towards the end of the episode. But um, when you talk about just uploading, so you're just saying that you don't go live, you're taking pre-recorded videos and uploading them to your influencer store. Correct. I want to see if I can find, I actually may have a great example here. And okay. I think I can share, is that okay? I can share. Absolutely. You can share the screen. We just have to kind of describe it when we, uh, for the yeah, podcast. Let me, do, let me do this. So um, I'm going to see if I can pull it up here and I can show an example of how this would work. Kelsey, try to take a screenshot if that's okay, uh, John. So we can put it in with the podcast. All right. All right. So I have my, my screen shared up here. This is my second monitor. So don't mind yep. if I'm staring off here. 
Um, this is basically the Amazon shop that's created as an influencer, right? Right. So um, traditionally, as an influencer, you've applied, you've been approved, you get this store immediately. Now, if I want to send my social media followers to this page, if they decide to consume anything that I've uploaded here, you basically have several categories. Um, you have what's called ideal lists, so you could create a, a collaboration of a themed product. You can do photos. This is probably more common with like women who would be doing clothing and things like that, doing yeah. photos, jewelry. Then you've also got videos, which are specific to specific products. And then you have your live streams. So if I actually filter for my live streams, you can see here's an example one I did. It was themed around kitchen products and more. So I went through and these are actually Thrasio products. So it was kind of a sponsored stream. They had like a thermometer, oven mitts, you know, kitchen cutting boards, airtight food storage. So I went through and um, I'll leave myself um, muted on this. But basically, I go through and I show videos that I produced prior of the products, and I just mute myself and talk about them. Another option is obviously I could physically have had that thermometer and be, you know, holding it up and showing it, and that's going to be a bit better experience. But this just kind of saves me a little bit of time. Um, once you get into that A list tier, Amazon really does want you to have those products physically on hand. They don't really want you showing videos or doing this stuff. So it's kind of a um, give and take, and there's a little bit of a um, open-endedness now. On Prime Day, there were a ton of people coming in, like um, a lot of a lot of people were complaining that people were just coming in and sitting there, not even showing a video, not even having the product on hand. They're just featuring something and just talking to the camera and reading off bullet points. So obviously, that's um, it's not that Amazon's against that, but I do know that when they started this, um, a lot of people were sitting there just showing hot tubs, and they would literally screen share the Amazon listing and just read everything out loud. So right. not really very high quality there, right? So where I'm actually making the most of my money right now is I'm going to show an example. If we go back to videos, um, these are all the videos that I've uploaded. So this is actually my wife's keyboard. And if I go to the traditional Amazon page for this, so this is your common Amazon listing, you have all of your images here that you see for that product. And you've also got a video that shows yeah. up here. Um, if we go into this, um, this has videos for this product, which is actually the merchant video. So that's kind of their commercial, if you will. Mm -hmm. And then there's this related video section. So this has the ability to have up to five, um, technically six total videos, including the merchant video. Some merchants may upload three videos. They could upload four. They could upload six. And they'll take that whole slot for themselves. Um, but an influencer can also upload a video. And in this case, I did that here. You can see no shame income. And I just labeled it Corsair Mechanical Keyboard Review. Um, if we play this, I'm going to actually mute myself, but it's basically me just showing the box, going through, talking about the keyboard, giving them an idea of what to expect, talking about the features and all the different things, and giving people a really good idea of what to expect with this keyboard. So, so you we, created that video. You didn't upload it from the product listing, right? Right. Correct. Yeah. I, I created the video and then I'm uploading it just as if I was uploading to YouTube. Does that make sense? Okay. So when you do that, you create it. it I'm just going to want to walk through this. So yep. you, you, you see this really great keyboard or anything, bounty, you know, paper towels, you do a, a video, you find the bounty listing, you upload in the related video section. Yep. And then how do you get a credit for that? If someone watches this video for 30 seconds and then they buy this keyboard, let's say they watch this. So this is a minute and this is a minute and 56 seconds. If they yeah. watch the video for 30 seconds and then they move forward to buy the keyboard, I will earn a commission. So how does that link to that related video? How does that how does Amazon know that that video was produced from the influencer? Uh, it's based on the ASIN. And then they also just they have a dashboard just as you would with YouTube. I can go in and basically see all my video uploads and I have the ability to pretty much do a title, a thumbnail. You can see on this one, I have a very basic thumbnail. And then the real key with this and why, in my opinion, it's so amazing, um, even for sellers, right? You have to be thinking about this. As a seller, I really think the benefit here is to be thinking about how can I get some people to make videos like this for my listings? That's really your big benefit here. Um, and while, yes, you could go live or you could add your own merchant videos, the benefit would be to have some other third party opinions, if you will, um, from about the products that you sell, mm -hmm. because these videos are going to help sell your product more. Um, but yeah, if we go down on the listing, you'll see there's a large um, carousel here. And it's kind of debatable how Amazon shows these, but you have usually videos for this product and then 
If you scroll over, you'll have videos for related products. Mm -hmm. um, Amazon typically does play around with this quite a bit. So right now, um, these are actually, um, and Amazon does this commonly, they're showing a lot of customer reviews for this. Um, but in a lot of cases, I will get my video showing up here on most product pages. Um, so right now I'll get typically the two placements. I'll get it up in the carousel and then I'll also get it in this carousel here um, on the videos for this product. So it's almost like prime real estate on the Amazon page. We might even be able to look back a little bit. These are some more recent ones. Um, here's one here. This is a new garage floor I just put in. Very expensive. If someone decides to go do this in their garage, they're probably gonna spend a thousand dollars, right? So if I go to this product listing, the merchant did not upload a video to the regular carousel. So because of that, no videos will show up here. So that's kind of an unfortunate okay. thing for me as an influencer. Um, but we still have, in most cases, that video carousel. So in this case, we do. We have videos for this product and then videos for related products. So these are all for other tiles or competitor tiles that are similar. Here is my video, prime real estate. If some one person watches this for 30 seconds and they're like, wow, this looks awesome. I want to do this in my garage. They spend two grand buying tiles. I'm going to get um, commission on that $2,000 they spent on these tiles. Okay, so just one more time, just and I hope I'm not the. I just turned sixty and I'm hiding my own Easter eggs. Oh, so, uh, anyways, you create the video. Yep. You you put it in. You upload it in your store. Then you link it. Okay, from from that point. So you just did that on your your uh, your your garage floor. Mm -hmm. You made it. You uploaded it into your uh, store. Correct. Correct. And then how do you link it from your store over to the related videos? So when you actually upload it, it automatically gets placed in your store, just like a recent video. And then it also, when you're uploading them, you're uploading it based on the ASIN of the product. So in this case, here's our ASIN for this product, right? So all I'm doing is copying this and uploading this video to this specific ASIN. And then it's basically taking that video, putting it in my store. So I'll usually upload about 10 of these at a time. Yeah, so yeah. I just grabbed all these all these videos here. Um, we're just like my recent upload. So all of them will just show up um, in the store in the last most recent order that I uploaded them. Um, okay. So I, I, I got it now. Yeah. I got it. Okay. And another question. And we got lots of questions that we have to get to. But yeah. uh, do you ever pay to drive traffic over to your um, your, your products? Um, so in this case, um, I don't really need to because Amazon's driving all the traffic, right? If someone's doing research on this garage floor, um, these tiles, right, then they're already here. They're doing that research, watching the videos. So um, in a lot of cases, I don't really need to. Um, one thing that I have been doing is I've actually been going over and I have a virtual assistant that's taking my existing videos and she's sort of editing them and making them compatible for either YouTube or mm -hmm. YouTube shorts as well as TikTok. So I'm sort of taking the existing videos that I have and just putting them on other platforms where I can now use my standard traditional affiliate link as an Amazon, you know, as an Amazon affiliate, if you will. Um, like if you take this listing, um, I can go up here and I have this thing called Site Stripe. This is a thing that is part of Amazon Associates. This link here, if someone uses this text link, it will just basically bring them straight to that product page and boom, they're there at the tiles. And here you can see there's a tag that's being applied, which will give me credit. So I'm now actually taking those videos and putting them on other social media platforms, and I can drive more traffic to my affiliate links in addition to the videos that are already published where people are finding them on Amazon. Very Does that cool. Make sense? Yeah, that makes sense. And with the videos or with your uh, influencer storefront, are you concerned at all with followers? Like uh, I know with live, you know, we're trying to get followers so we get they get notifications. Um, how does that work here? Um, it doesn't really matter with the videos. So I haven't been super focused on it, um, mm -hmm. to be honest. Um, I have right now, I've kind of, uh, uh, one thing I learned from a mentor was I kind of looked at everything I was doing. And again, it goes back to your shiny object thing. If you, if you draw, draw, drew a pie right now in your life and said, well, where do all the things that I'm doing go? If I look at just my business, um, I have a bigger, and again, I don't want to plug myself too much on the show, but I created a course that goes into all of this in great detail, both on the YouTube and the Amazon front. So 50% of my energy has been selling that program. 
And then the other 50% of my energy is taking products like my bubble leaf blower here and making videos and uploading them. And that's been working really well for me. It's kind of given me the focus of showing others what I'm doing, making money doing that, and just constantly doing new video uploads. Wow, um, this has been uh, very educational. So, uh, yeah. uh, okay, so we do have some questions here. Do you still have time? Yeah, I've got time. Okay, Kelsey, do your part. All right, so yeah, we have lots of questions uh, coming in. So. We had a couple talking or asking about TOS and if it's okay to promote your own products as like an Amazon influencer. So from Jeff, uh, is it against TOS to promote your own product as an Amazon influencer? So I think you'd be okay doing the lives. I see plenty of large brands. Yeah. Doing that. Um, in terms of the videos, you're probably going to want to have um, a merchant video could be something that you would personally upload to your actual listing within the Amazon Seller Central dashboard, just as you'd be editing product details. Um, but typically for influencers, um, you're going to want, you know, I'm actually going to give an example. Um, I could pull my screen back up for this if I needed to, but uh, I don't even know if I'm going to be able to find the product. Um, there was this, I'll give an example. So a good friend of mine, he's an electrician uh, local to me. He actually invented this stand that holds a tool belt that's made for contractors. Kind of a cool invention. He put it up on Amazon. I helped him get it over to FBA, you know, all this inventory. And he could have made a video for that listing as the merchant. But um, he hired me as an influencer to come in and create a video review, just like what I would, would have done here with the keyboard or any of those other products. So what, I, what I've been doing, actually, is I have... Um, there's a community that I partnered up with where they have a grouping of people, mostly single mothers that sell on Amazon. So they're making all these unique products and um, they actually have a service where they just charge like 50 bucks and they'll just send me the product. I actually don't even know what it is that I'm getting and I will review it, do the influencer video, upload it to the listing. And then now that vendor gets the exposure and I'm the one who does that. Um, of course, a seller could find, three other influencers to do this. It's pretty common depending on the product. If you're willing to give away um, your product, I think that's um, something you could do. But um, typically you're probably going to have to, you know, consider anybody you're working with, they're going to charge you, right? If someone's, if you came to me and said, well, I want you to feature my product on a live, I'm probably going to want to be compensated for that. Um, yeah. Another way is obviously earning bonus commission. Um, I have a couple of vendors. I can pull reports out of Amazon and at the end of the month, if I sold X number of your product, I could get a 10% commission on sales or something like that as a bonus. So that's like an incentive for me to feature it in live or do the video or any of that stuff. Yeah, one of the, I just saw Jeff's comment here. Um, I, I know for a fact, um, if you're going live, and that's what live's for. So you can promote your product all day long. Um, I did read that uh, if you're going out there uh, and promoting as an influencer, uh, you could upload a video, by the way, um, just like John was saying, to your listing, no problem. I do it all the time. Yep. So like for our products, no problem. All, you know, We'll talk to our, our uh, team. We'll produce videos. We upload them and uh, no problem at all. Uh, so you can get an influencer to do it. You can, you know, that's another way of doing it, just like John's talking about. Um, and it's absolutely not against TOS. The only questionable part is uh, as an influencer. So if you are a seller and you have an influencer program under the same um, uh, login, then I would be careful with that part because if you're getting uh if you're if you're both uh, amazon could come back and question it uh, i do think that that is something to be careful of just another thing i was going to say too that there's some vendors um that i've seen that will actually like they may come to an influencer and say hey can you record this video and then um, they'll actually go and take that video and upload it on the merchant portion of their videos so it's kind of stealing from the influencer, right? It's taking away their ability to earn commissions. Mm -hmm. So you don't ever want to do that. Um, I would hope most people would know that's kind of obvious unless they're paying you for those rights or they're, you know, you're paying them for that right. Um, but that's not really usually the case. I mean, the idea would be you'd come to me as an influencer and say, hey, I'd really love you to do a video review on our product. 
Um, you would ship that to me for free, probably just go into your fulfillment by Amazon. I have instructions, actually, I have a whole page. I send to people, it shows them step-by-step -step how to mail it to me directly from Amazon's FBA warehouses. And then um, I would receive the product, I review it within a week, I upload the video, and then that shows up on your listing. Yeah. Um, you wouldn't want to take, I've seen one company, they were taking my videos and then like they had, for example, a rocking chair for outdoors and they had a little table that went with it. They took my table video and then they uploaded it to the same as a merchant video for their chair. So it was like they were stealing my potential commissions. Yeah, that's not kosher. Uh, yeah. That's that's not kosher at all. If uh, and, and that's something you have to, um, as an influencer, you have to kind of do your own police work. Mm -hmm. um, I was talking to another person that was a, a very well-known influencer. And one of the things that they were saying is that they've seen people take their their hard work and you know their time and effort that they've spent on it and then they strip out or they try to strip out um their bonus code or however they're getting paid and they'll put it on different channels so mm. that is so unethical you know if, if you get somebody who's going to be making their living off of that code don't screw it up because it'll come back and it could bite you right right Anyways, that was just a statement. Um, all right, Kels, next. Okay, the next question is from Andrew. Uh, how do you figure out the best time to go live? Obviously, it's product dependent, and I know you were saying that you don't usually focus on lives, but do you have any tips? What time is the um, best? I, I mean, I don't really know if there's like a specific time over the other. I know that during like the holidays and special events, like people were complaining that you know they're thinking, oh, Prime Day, it's going to be amazing. Let's let's go live, but then like everyone was doing it so <laughs> like, you got these big guys that are seeing diminished numbers because there's just so many of them um and while the traffic is higher on those days i don't know that it was benefiting everyone because of the sheer amount of people doing it um but yeah i mean i was just kind of doing it more as a scheduled thing so if i said you know hey i'm gonna you know show up at 10 a.m and just do the live monday wednesday friday that works better for me um, it does have a little bit of sticking potential because I did notice like I could go live and I could check a week or two later and some of the sales were still coming in. So I think Amazon kind of tries to keep it out there for a little bit, um, but it's definitely not as good as like a shoppable video would in terms of stick rate being something that just shows on the page. Right. Um, the lives are really more designed for people that can bring an audience or bring um, like Amazon wants that there because it's it's almost catered to like, the woman who has a thousand, thousands and thousands of Instagram followers and they want to go feature jewelry and clothing and they can bring this massive audience over. That's that's kind of where I, and they're, they're very much marketing it towards that type of demographic, I think. Um, I do see a few people like there's a guy in tech who has I was talking with the other day who's got a big YouTube channel and he already had existing relationships. So he's getting like sponsored from large tech brands to go live on Amazon and he's probably getting paid just to show up. That's um, something I saw the other day mm -hmm. that Amazon yeah. now has a spot there for a sponsor. So I had no idea. And I, I, I just saw it, Kelsey and I on the weekend and we said, you mean you could put a, a sponsor's logo on, on here? And we, we were just going to call Amazon and find out all about that today. Yeah, I'm not 100% on how that all works, but that probably, um, like I noticed a lot of the top ones, like I was looking at one earlier and there's a camera company called Arlo. So mm -hmm. you might see a stream and it'll say like sponsored by Arlo. And then half of their streams products are basically that Arlo camera or different combinations of the products that that Arlo company offers. And I think that's actually an Amazon brand. Um, mm -hmm. But you will see, you know, commonly, People are showing up and saying, you know, stream sponsored by such and such. I think there was even one last year. Someone went on and they were featuring like a, an actual brand name, like Hyundai um, SUV, a literal, and you could buy it on Amazon. So that was really cool. Um, I thought that was funny. But yeah, I mean, it's probably just reaching out. I mean, if you're depending on where you're at as a seller, right, if you have a large brand with like themed products, I think you could potentially be doing that yourself or just hiring someone to do this and feature your products for you. Um, as long as you come up with a reasonable idea as to what you want to offer, uh, you know, an influencer, um, if you want to do it yourself or hire someone within to do this, I think you can do that too. Um, but yeah, it's just a matter of, 
you know, how you want to go about all this. I will say as well as a seller, you probably, if we're looking, I was just showing that um, tile page, they don't have a merchant video for that. So it, it somewhat actually puts a disadvantage for influencers to, if they upload, they're not going to see that extra placement. Yeah. The merchant has to have had uploaded a video for it to show in that initial image carousel. Um, and again, Amazon's changing rules on stuff all the time. So we have seen some cases where like only prime accounts were seeing the video visibility at times. Mm -hmm. um, maybe it only showed up on mobile versus desktop. So it does seem they're doing a lot of split testing, changing things, trying different things. Um, they have been trying to do better about um, approvals. I would also say uh, as a warning, if anyone decides to go out and do shoppable video, I know of a fellow who thought he could be smart and walk into like Best Buys and Walmarts and Targets and just sit there with a camera guy and say, well, here's this lawnmower, here's this barbecue. And uh, yeah, it didn't work out so good. Oh. So, um, just really have to go into it by somewhat playing the rules. But at the same time, I do think it's a little bit of a free for all. It's a little bit of a new program. There are some accounts where um, we've seen some people like they're clearly like people in other countries, probably just going and stealing people's videos, uploading them as an influencer. Um, there are some people who are taking videos and uploading multiple variations. Like they would do the air conditioner and say, well, here's how to hook up the hoses. And then they'll make another video and, you know, do a review or here's another video. And it's a demo. So it's kind of a little bit shady, but the Amazon isn't very particular about the rules around some of that. Um, and then there's also a lot of accounts. Um, there's a large company called what tools inside and they have like 50 plus people that are just reviewing stuff under the same account. And that's also been a hit or miss discussion as to whether or not Amazon wants that happening. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't let anybody else in my videos. Like if my wife was going to go talk about garden stuff, she'd be way better at it than I could talk about it. But I specifically just focus on um, me being in the videos, me talking about the features. I try to play by Amazon's rules because there's too much, too much at risk for me to be messing around trying to game any system or get my hands on some product at a Best Buy just to make an extra commission, knowing that could lead to me being banned. Yeah. Um, so just some food for thought, I guess, there. Okay. Next question. This one is from Epiphany. Uh, this is, it uh, says, under what circumstances would an influencer refuse to review a product? Have you ever refused to do a product yourself? Um, I mean, I'm at a point where I'm getting so many products. Um, usually I'm saying no, because mostly it's something I just don't need. And, um, you know, I, I don't, you know, it's like becoming a problem that I have things that have value. And it's like, I'd rather almost throw it in the trash. So that's really become more of the problem, I think, for me as an influencer. And I know a lot of other people feel similarly. Um, there's a lot of uh, vendors in China who are like very on to the influencers. And some of the stuff, I mean, I have a guy who's just constantly asking me. I mean, he wanted to send me a $130 mirror. It was a really nice mirror, but it was like, I don't really have a place for it. Yeah. So it's like, what am I going to do with that? And yeah, I could sell it on Marketplace or Craigslist, but that's extra time that I really, it's a debatable question, right? Um, I had someone just send me a $400 um, treadmill, really nice. I actually had a very similar one. It was like a literal competitor to one I got a year ago. I sold the other ones for like a couple hundred bucks. And I was like, well, I'll sell this one easy. I put it up for 175 and now I've just got the burden of these super annoying people on Marketplace, right? And it's taking up a ton of space. And it's like, what do I do with this thing? Yeah. Um, so, it, it, yeah, I would say that's going to be the biggest thing is like, do I actually have a use for it? Or is there someone I could give it to? Or is it going to go at a yard sale? You know, all that kind of, that, those would be the questions in my mind. But the bigger advantage would be if you paid, like, let's say you pay me 50 bucks or 25 bucks or something like that. At least I know I could make money. And if I did get rid of it or give it away, I, it's not really going to bother me, you know, because yeah. I at least I made money on my time. Okay, Kels, let's have one more question. And then just before we get to the question, um, we've got a great giveaway. It is a course from John. It's actually five, but we're going to give one away with a press release and one of our Lunch with Norm mugs today. Um, hashtag Wheel of Kelsey and tag two people and you get a second entry. Um, all right, let's have one more and then we'll post the others a bit uh, in, into the group, Kels. Okay, this is from Tony. Uh, should you focus reviews on higher and better selling products as they pay more? Or are you kind of... Yeah, I mean, for sure. Like, 
obviously I would prioritize that, but I just wouldn't, I wouldn't um, discredit something that's smaller, right? Like I was saying, I'm crushing it with like a mouth. I, I think I made, I'd have to look at the stats, but it was like over the course of this year, I think I've made like six or $700 on mouthwash in, in commission, um, mm -hmm. which is ridiculous, right? Cause I'm probably only getting um, like 50 cents or something. Cause they're like, it's like 15 bucks. So the commission is extremely low. So it does add up. And that's really where I've looked at, I would, if you were to do this, if you were to go and say, well, this is what I'm going to do. Um, I would just go around your house and find the most expensive items that you have that are on Amazon first. Okay. All right, Kelsey, we got one more word from our sponsor, then we'll go to the wheel. All right, here we go. Just give me one second. Sure. And... Have you got as far as you can using automated tools to manage your advertising, but know that there's so much more you could be doing? Maybe you don't know where to start or how to improve your Amazon advertising. Why not talk to Clear Ads, an Amazon certified partner with over five years of experience in moving beyond automation campaigns to sophisticated and proven advertising approaches that are far more effective for larger scale Amazon sellers. Clear Ads prides itself on being an extension of your business, providing insights into how to achieve results and ensures that you are able to understand the approaches taken and how they work for your business. Talk to Clear Ads today and let them know you heard about them on the Lunch with Norm podcast and get a free audit and see how Clear Ads can work with you to build your business today. Okay, so John, you've never seen Wheel of Kelsey. Put your volume down. <laughs> All right, here we go. Here's the Wheel of Kelsey. It's time for the Wheel of Kelsey. All okay. right, so thank you everyone for entering today's Wheel of Kelsey. And we'll be spinning the wheel here. Uh, we do this every single podcast, so uh, if you're not the winner today, make sure you come back. Uh, Wednesday and Friday, and uh, here we go. So if you are the winner, please email me, k at lunchwithnorm.com. And it looks like our winner is Connor. All right, Connor. <laughs> Perfect. Sure you're going to enjoy that. All right, so Connor, please email me uh, within 48 hours, k at lunchwithnorm.com, and we'll set you up with your uh, new course. Fantastic. So, John, uh, if you could just stick around, we're going to uh, be removing you from the screen, but uh, I'll be back in about a minute to talk to you. Sure. All right. Well, thank you so much. This was very oh. informative. I, I yes. Uh, one more thing. I, well, I was going to ask John uh, his contact information if people oh, would yes. like to and the course uh, get a hold of you. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I was going to just at least mention a couple things. Um, I know because obviously your audience is sellers. One, if you're interested in having me do a video review of a product that you sell on Amazon as an influencer, I'd be happy to speak with you about that. Um, if you head over to noshameincome.com, you can actually find my email on there and my contact and reach out and I'd be happy to chat with you about that. I'm usually pretty open to a lot of products, um, even more so if you're willing to compensate a little bit for the video. And then the other half of this is for some of you who maybe are interested in learning what I've been doing with YouTube. I shared, you know, what I did with my chair video at the beginning of the podcast and what I'm also doing with um, shoppable video and how I've been able to generate this. I have a pretty fully fledged like six to eight hour long masterclass that goes over all of this. Um, you could email me about it right now as it's not publicly available at the moment. So if you're curious about that, feel free to reach out and um, yeah, I'd be able to help with either of those things. Um, yeah, hopefully that covers it. Very good. All right. So thank you for interrupting me, Kelsey. That was good. <laughs> Anyways, thank you, sir, for coming on. And uh, I got through some of my questions. I didn't get through near the amount of questions I wanted to, but uh, it was a long, we went well over uh, the hour. So um, yeah, it was a really great topic. So thank you, sir. No problem. All right, everybody. I hope you enjoyed today's episode. I thought it was fantastic, but I'm a little biased. Um, uh, Kelsey, where are you? All right. So yes, uh, thank you everyone for the questions. We got tons in today. So, uh, hopefully you enjoyed today's episode. I know it was a little different than our usual, um, customer or, um, Amazon seller topic, but we thought we'd change it up and just 
let you know um, another way of possibly making money. And I can see from Marcia's comments, uh, Marcia says, great show, so much information. And I have a couple of friends I wanna share this with right away. I think they would love this business idea. So hopefully we uh, just open the doors for some people and um, it could just be another way to make a, a few hundred bucks here and there. Um, or much and more. Yeah. Or much, much more. So let us know what you th thought about today's episode. Don't forget to smash those like buttons. Give us a thumbs up if you enjoyed today's episode. And if you have other topics that you'd like us to talk about on Lunch with Norm, you can always email me, k at lunchwithnorm.com, or comment on this video uh, down below and let us know. And be part of the community. Uh, join our Facebook group, Lunch with Norm, Amazon FBA and e-commerce collective. That's where all the fun stuff happens. That's where we get discounts giveaways as we were providing uh four giveaways from john um, in the facebook group and we'll announce how to do that exactly in the contest we'll be running there but um definitely join the link is in the bio uh in the descriptions on facebook and youtube so check it out and i think that's it all right so join us every monday wednesday and friday at noon eastern standard time and thank you for being part of the community it's constantly growing we love it. We could not do this podcast without you. And we will see you next time. Lunch with the, lunch with the, lunch with the.